Hey guys, so we got the new, the pump. Uh, short block in. I got two new uh, tappets for it. The new updated floating pin ones, diamond coated or whatever the heck they call them. Um, I still got to clean the gear pump. Up. The gear pump will come off the back of this pump and be mounted here. The support brackets will come off and be mounted here. Um, I'm kind of glad it came with the gear on it. Don't got to mess with that. And then I'm going, I go, I went ahead and kept the other parts too. I'm going to put the new uh, plungers on the head and stick them in there. And uh, we'll use the old gear pump. And uh, cause I had good, I had good gear pump pressure. There was nothing wrong with that. And I did an inlet restriction test on it and it passed the inlet restriction test. So um, here's the procedure that came with the pump. And I bought the timing tool as well. That darn thing there. 479 bucks for that and yeah, they're pretty proud of that so I, I've never done this before so I'm just gonna be reading the directions here I'll have to get on quick serve uh, this procedure here is on quick serve too I looked it up but I really want to thank uh, there's a couple guys Stephen hips and another guy he I can remember sorry I forgot the name on your YouTube name there but uh, Stephen hips was the uh, one guy too and there was another individual as well but they really helped me out and uh, helped me along with this information, so I really appreciate it. So another another thing that uh, you can put in your arsenal that you learn. So hopefully I get to do another one in a short time. That way, <laughs> that's my problem. I forget stuff because I work on so many different things. It's the problem. I'd like to specialize in something, but I I don't do enough of one thing to to specialize in it. I guess, but. Anyway, um, let me get all my ducks in a row here and we'll start putting this thing together. There's our head gasket. And there is the O-ring that goes between the gear pump and the housing. Ceiling washers, you always wanna use new ceiling washers. Okay, the guide pin. Okay, this lot's gonna go up, okay? Those will slide in the hole like so. And they've got a slot here with the screwdriver that you can turn them with. Now the book's telling you to put the plungers in first, or the barrels, or whatever the heck they're calling them, but to me, wouldn't you want to put these in first? And then you could line up your um, I guess those will go in a certain distance, huh, and stop. No, they won't. They'll just keep going through till they go full out. I see. I, 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 I was thinking put them in to where you can see them and then put your barrels in. Go get a flat blade screwdriver. I didn't bring one with me. Oh, I got quite a mess. I got so many projects going on, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Engine out of this bobcat. I'm waiting on parts for it. I'm gonna really pay attention in here and do this, do this right. So I don't know if I'll have a lot of commentary on this video. I just want to do this right. And not screw anything up. I can kind of see they don't want you going too deep with the with it. I can see that. Maybe you could just stick the, the barrels in and then rotate these with the screwdriver till the notch was up. I think it'd probably be fine, but some other guys probably got a better idea to do it because they do it all the time. Okay, well. closed up here on the bench where I can shine it the camera so I'm not close to what we're doing here okay so 
new rollers and uh, I think I'm gonna dump some oil on them and lube them up. Didn't say that in the book, but it just, I don't know, they've already got some kind of assembly lube on them already. So I guess they'll be all right. But you got your slot here where that guide is. Okay, that's gonna go, that's gonna go in there. And I already got, my hands are not that dirty today and I still got something on there. Let me pour a little oil on there after I clean them off anyhow. All right, so obviously the slot, the roller's gonna go down. That's gonna go towards your, towards your guide. Is that cam up or am I hitting something or what's going on here? There we go. And I can actually physically see that guide and, and I, I know I've got it right, so. I'm gonna move this one back just a touch. And get the other new one out. We'll do the same thing. There's a little kind of an instruction thing there. We're going to replace these plungers too on the head. Oh, this has got the floating pins in it. I guess they'll stay in there. I guess they'll stay centered, I guess. That's kind of crazy, huh? you think they'd walk out against the bore and tear the bore up. Okay. Okay, so. There they are. They are in there, and those slots are up vertical. So let's put the plugs in. I got the plugs right here. I wonder if it came with new O-rings for these plugs. Oh, it came with new plugs. I took the ones out of the old pump. Didn't need to do that. Problem solved. Now I got a torque wrench. These are torqued down to 18 foot-pounds with a six millimeter Allen. And then we'll get these off. We can pop our springs off. Our uh, plungers there, and we'll take these out and put the new ones in there, and clean that head up and uh, put it on. I'll have to go get my laptop and it comes quick serve, fire it up. Make sure we're doing all this stuff right. First one for me. I was going to pre-lube the pump and dump oil down there, but it's just going to run out the back of the pump because the gear pump's not on there, so you can't really do that and pre-lube it. I did dump a little bit of oil on top of the cam lobes. I just wanted to make sure things were getting lubed up right. Eighteen foot-pounds. Let me go get a torque wrench. I'll torque these down. Um, I'll clean this up. Pull these off the head here. And then we'll install the new ones on the head. I got a new fuel control actuator for it too. I mean, it's got 800,000 miles on it. We're going this far. Let's just go ahead and change it out. Okay. Well, guys, the wind is blowing pretty bad, so I thought this would be a good time for voiceover. I just wanted to uh, explain to you what I was doing here. I'm putting the new plungers in. Uh, there's some ceiling washers that go on the end of those and I read quick serve and, and, and it pretty much tells you what I was thinking from the very beginning I was like I don't really want to grease those in there you know to make them stick with them upside down so just hold the head right side up and then that way the ceiling washer will stay on there and then screw them in there and then you can put them back in the vise and and torque them down <clears throat> on the other hand uh, I want to talk to you about something that I haven't never seen before that I actually witnessed here recently had a 7430 
John Deere uh, 7430 premium John Deere tractor with a 6068 engine in them, which would be a 6.8 liter power tech. And this thing started uh, knocking all of a sudden. Well, they had parked it that night and they got up the next day to use it again. They started the tractor up and it started knocking. So I went and looked at it, fired it up, and it was knocking. I said, Yeah, it's screwed up. Haul it to the shop. So I did a relative compression test on it with my Texa diagnostic scan tool, and it came back with cylinders two and three as low compression. Two was like at 60%, and three was like 15 or 20 percent something like that three was really bad so I started tearing this thing apart knowing there was knowing there was something wrong you know on top with the compression wise and anyway I started pulling this thing apart and found that the arm that runs the VGT actuator the those 7330s or 7430 series the VGT actuator sits there, then it has an actual arm, kind of like a, if you ever seen a six liter power stroke that has a little arm on it, uh, kind of similar to that. Anyway, the arm was laying off to the side, and the heim joint was just popped off. So I thought that was kind of odd. So anyways, pulled the head off. Cylinder number three was completely embedded with metal and cylinder two had a couple pieces of metal embedded into piston and long story short uh pulled valve c or pull all the valves out of the head on cylinders two and three didn't see any broken valve seats no valves damaged it was kind of scratching my head what was going on so i decided to go back to the actual problem that i could physically see which was the vgt turbo actuator arm being off so I tore the entire turbo part, and they have a vein type turbo, kind of like a six liter power stroke for the VGT. Well, lo and behold, uh, when I pulled the hot housing and the VGT part apart on it, all the veins had broken and shot through the exhaust manifold, and those obviously had exhaust valves open at that particular time, and they wound up at on top of the piston so I thought I'd share you with that that was kind of an odd thing that I've never seen before a VGT coming apart like that uh, sorry the phone's been ringing off the hook and I didn't catch the step here this is these are pull your springs off do them one at a time that way these stay with the you know the, the springs stay with the punchers and barrels they came off of and all that good stuff hold on plane's coming over okay uh, 60 foot pounds and then 60 degrees uh, you can either mark a flat or you can get one of those fancy torque wrenches like I've got that snap on cells you can do that's what I used so let's put the let's move the giant in out of the way and okay so here's your gasket your head gasket notice that you've got a hole here so line your hole up And I'm not sure, I wonder if there's a spot on this cam that would, that's the lowest spot I can get it to. Oh, comes another plane. Five boys are going at it today. another one there's a screen on this one get to make sure that screen is clean on that banjo uh, I got to torque these down to 50 foot-pounds I want to blow through this again make sure it's clean to the return and I mean the outlet 
and the uh, inlet and return. Uh, fuel control actuator, you gotta pull it off, put the new one on. We're getting there. I gotta torque these down to 50 foot pounds here. The pump, the plane flies over. I'll explain this to you. Okay. Yes, sir. Fuel pump timing gauge part number 5572562. Onto the fuel pump housing, align the slots on the fuel pump timing gauge with the fuel pump camshaft pins. Verify the XPI stamping is visible when the fuel pump timing gauge is installed. Insert a 3 inch breaker bar into the housing. Yeah, on the, yeah, okay. Rotate the fuel pump camshaft to align the gauge's XPI hole with the fuel pump bolt closest to the engine. So, here's my timing tool. Here's the holes you're going to be lining up on these pins that come off the camshaft of the pump. This would be the one I'm thinking that would be closest to the engine would be this one. Yeah, it's got to be closer than the other ones are. And here's my XPI hole. All right. All right. Now I think what you can do, this little bolt that comes with it, you can lock this in place. So I'm just going to hand tighten it. I'm ready to put this pump on. I'm going to put all the mounting brackets on after I slide the pump in. I've got to go over there and let's get the uh, let's get the Cummings timing pin. I had to pull the plug out of the side of the block, and then uh, darn it! Hold on a second. Where? And then we're gonna rotate the crank damper around to where it says insert pin. We'll insert that, and then we'll throw our pump in there. And then we'll put all the rest of the stuff on. Oh yeah, new gasket. Line the insert pin up, put the pin in it. Pull the plug out of the block, stick the pin in it.
got our insert pin mark here. We can't hardly see what it says there. Lined up with the mark on the front timing cover and the rubber plug. I pried the dirty son of a gun out and it shot back into the radiator shrouds. So I gotta take that out. <laughs> but you got your timing pin. It's, I had to get an easy out because some pecker head rounded the Allen out on it and left it for the next guy. So I got the plug out of there and that insert that timing pin's got a green mark on it and it'll be flush with the block once you get it timed right you'll know it's it's a tight fit so you got to go really slow when you get to where the mark is almost lined up so all right so got the gasket shoved on the pump housing the new gasket where's the long bolts at Let's see, this long one's the one that... Which one did I... One of these, I had a hell of a time getting I mean, it was tighter than... You know what? That one there's one. Okay. I'm trying to remember which one the long one was. I guess I'll figure it out when I get it on there. Alright. So what I got to do is I'm going to stick this here fancy camera. Right here. And get it finagled up in here. And I'm going to grab that pump. Climb underneath and stick her in there. I'm gonna grab this bolt and bolt it in. and everything's lining up where it's supposed to be. See a little bit of dirt in my outlet fitting. Let's ratchet in a 15 millimeter and suck them up. a little bit of tension on it just hope that I'm <laughs> just hope that you're right something ain't gonna bind up on you Pretty, that fuel line's just tighter than hell on there. Back them off my 
timing tools tight. I want to make sure we're not having a problem here. There and it seems like it's not loose now on the timing tool. That sure did tighten her. Did tighten her up. I mean, I guess it's there because it lined up and it went in. <clears throat> say it have to be there okay. you can mess around with that if you want to Steve I'm gonna get underneath and torque that down to 60 foot pounds If the gear housing is rough inside where that mounts, that you gotta, the, I guess the fuel pumps on these things, I guess they'll, the bearings will go out in the pump, and I guess they'll contact the gear housing and ruin the gear housing. I can't even get the torque wrench on that bottom one because it's hitting the ground. I'll just have to tighten it up by hand. And, you want a shorter one? Yeah, I'll just tighten it up by hand. I'll get these two torqued. I mean, it's not. Oh shoot! It's on. It's on torque angle steel. There we go. Okay, guys. I didn't video a whole lot of that reassembly. Just started pouring and raining like crazy and i mean i i really want to get this these guys going and i uh got her running all went pretty smooth except for the starting part because some moron shut the valves off on the tanks and couldn't figure out why it wouldn't prime so anyways uh <laughs> me and my lovely wife i told her hey hon you want to go for a ride so we jumped in the truck and we went up highway 140 there's a pretty good hill there before the ry ranch and we put her on the floor because i know i i could make the 559 code pop up pop on on the flat before just on the flat and put it on the floor and, and 13th and with the splitter and high and it would it would derate you and cut the power well i i held it on the floor although and that's a pretty good it's like if you guys have been on mount hebron uh some and it's it's like that i mean it's a good pull it's a good six six seven six six or seven percent grade for about i don't know maybe four or five miles Ah, eh, not that long it's probably uh, not four or five miles it's maybe two two miles it's a pretty good pull and i just put her on the floor there and and uh it pegged the speedometer at the top there so uh and never kicked out never no check engine light nothing none of that so uh we brought it back i called them it's 7 30 at night i uh, kind of just i wanted a video further because i'm going to drop the pan on it and i'm going to pull number four main off uh i just want to make sure so everybody <laughs> everybody you know so i'm going to get up around four in the morning 
and do that and uh, knock that out and uh make sure uh, maybe i'll video that i i don't know these guys are gonna go this thing's gonna haul cows tomorrow if we don't find anything uh bad there but everything turned out good i just want to let you guys listen to it run check engine light. Isn't that nice? Nice to not have a check engine light. She sounds good. Fan go off. Sounds good. Well, guys, I'm gonna call it a night. I'm soaking wet. It got wet clear through my coveralls all the way down to my undies. I'm gonna go build a fire in the house. If it's cold and I'm wet get warmed up and get thawed out and we'll hit it hard again tomorrow thanks for watching